In this video, we would like to illustrate the solution of a three-dimensional problem involving the moment of a force, and then after finding that, how to find that moment of the force about a specified axis. The problem we're going to look at is problem 4-66 out of Hibbler's 13th edition book, found on page 147. And here's a schematic of the problem. It involves an A-frame structure. It is symmetric about the vertex going vertically down. But as you apply the load, which is shown in the red there, of 80 pounds directed vertically upward, you're hoisting this A-frame structure up. And at a particular instance, as it's being hoisted up, if you will, it, the snapshot at that moment is what is pictured in the sketch given to you. And we're trying to find the moment of this force F, um, and then trying to find it about the red Y axis. Notice that you also have a blue Y prime axis. So the blue is, if you will, the X prime, Y prime, Z prime axes uh, system. And then the in the red, the X, Y, and then of course, I can also make this part red too. This would be the X, Y, and Z axis system. Okay, so uh, to try and get at a solution here, a plan may involve, first of all, us getting the coordinate of the vertex. Let me put some letters here so we can talk about what, what the vertex is. I'm calling that point C here. So let's get the coordinates of the vertex C in the x prime y prime axis system then let's get our position vector r out to the line of action of the force vector f we can unitize uh, uh, we'll get a vector along the y red axis and then unitize it to get u hat sub y and then having all of that information we can do the scalar triple product that will be the y hat sub sorry, y hat sub y dotted into the r cross f. The r cross f is your moment vector, okay? And then, um, I don't know if this was asked in the original problem statement, but just to make, round out the problem, if you will, we would have the magnitude my. We can just as easily find the vector my. And the way to do that is to multiply the magnitude by that unitized u hat sub y vector, which is lying in the y axis. And we'll draw a picture of that here in just a second. So let's go ahead and start our solution. So the coordinate, the coordinates of vertex C in the x prime y prime axis system. Um, it's going to involve an x prime comma y prime comma z prime. Um, notice that this segment from A to D lies at the midpoint of this leg to leg distance of six feet. So that's going to be three feet. And then from D to B is another three feet. From D to C, that line segment, this one, let me do it in blue, that line segment that I just drew is given to us as being six feet. And we're also told the elevation angle at that point is 15 degrees as drawn in that green little triangle sitting there. So the X prime uh, coordinate of C out here is going to be this. Let me draw it in blue. It's going to be that distance that I just drew in blue. And that's going to actually be equal to minus six times the cosine of 15 degrees. Okay, so um, let me get rid of that now. All right, comma, and it's minus because it's going in the minus x prime direction. Comma, the y prime position of that is simply three feet. And then the elevation of that is going to be six times the sine of 15 degrees, which is 
this part right here that I just drew in the blue. Okay, so now I can easily formulate my R vector, which is, let me draw that in red, it's going to be this vector. Okay, f going from the origin at A out to the vertex at C. And that is simply gotten by changing the parentheses into a pointy bracket and putting those same coordinates there. And the reason why I can do that is because it, we're, the vector is emanating. It's starting from the origin at A where it's the 0, 0, 0 um, coordinates. And I want a pointy bracket there. Okay, good. And then I can find the force vector, and that's easy to do. It has no fx prime component, so it's zero. It has no fy prime component, so that's zero. But it does have an fz prime component, and that's 80 in units of pounds. The next thing I'd like to do is actually get a vector... Um, let me do this in purple. I'd like to get a vector along the axis that I'm going to try and get my moment to be uh, acting up about. We want the moment about the y-axis, so it would help if I had a, let's say, a y-prime vector along the y-axis, and then I could unitize that, and when I unitize that, I can get a u-hat sub y, and then I'm in business. So in the next figure, the next sketch that I have here, I'm trying to illustrate all of that. That is to say, here is the y vector. And I would like to get my y vector first so that I can then unitize it. Well, we're told by the problem statement that this is, uh, this amount right here is 3 feet. We're also told in the problem statement that this is a right angle. This is, if you will, the x prime axis coming out this way. And this leg of this right triangle is gotten by the tangent relationship. So it's going to be opposite over adjacent. So, so let's do that. So let me call this momentarily a question mark. So the question mark over the 3 feet is equal to the tangent of that angle 30 degrees. So the question mark is 3 times the tangent of 30 and we can go back to our basics on um, triangles that we know uh, 30 60 90 triangle has proportions of 1 is to 2 is to radical 3 so 1 is to 2 on the hypotenuse is to radical 3 adjacent to the 30 degree angle and so the tangent this amount right here of 30 degrees is equal to opposite over adjacent, it's 1 over rad 3, which is the same thing as rad 3 over 3. And so I can finally, by multiplying 3 times rad 3 over 3, I get rad 3 feet for that, this amount right here. Okay, so um, now I have a means of getting the coordinates of this point in the x prime, y prime, z prime um, axis coordinate system. And in the x prime, uh, you can see that that's going to be minus radical 3 feet. And then in the y prime, it's going to be 3, and it has no z prime component, so that's 0. So I can say that my y vector is to take those parentheses and make it pointy brackets. So I get minus rad 3, 3, 0 for the y prime components. And the magnitude of y is the square root of the sum of those squares. So let's do that. And this works out to being radical 12, which can be rewritten as 2 rad 3. And so therefore, I can say that the y sorry, u hat sub y is going to equal, that's the unitization of the y vector. So it's the y vector over its magnitude, so it's going to be minus rad 3, comma 3, comma 0 
over 2 rad 3 and if you work that out on the algebra you can re rewrite all of this as minus a half a half rad 3 0 let me just check that real fast I think um, yeah I believe that is correct right so in the first case the rad 3's would cancel and you'd be left with minus a half in the second case this rad 3 can pop up top and then over 3 so that would knock the 3's out and then you'd have a half of rad 3 so yes that looks right too okay so now we have the u hat sub y and we're in a position where we can actually do our scalar triple product so here that goes so our moment about the y-axis is the unit vector there dotted with the moment and the moment is nothing other than the r cross f okay so this right here is your moment and to do this we formulate our 3 by 3 determinant it consists of the first row being the components of the u hat sub y which are given to us right up above it's minus 0.5 and you don't need commas in the determinant so it's 0.5 rad 3 and then it's 0 and then the next one the next row are the components of our r vector and that happened to be given up here so it's minus 6 cos of 15 degrees it is 3 and 6 sine of 15 degrees and then the components of the f force vector is 0 0 and 80 and I think the easiest way to compute this determinant is to go about the third row so let's do that if I expand about the third row I can write this as being 0 times some determinant which I don't care about minus 0 times another determinant which I don't care about because the 0 wipes it out plus the 80 times this determinant the determinant when I wipe out the row and column containing the 80 I'm left with this little 2 by 2 determinant and so that's going to be minus a half a half rad 3 minus 6 cos of 15 degrees and then 3 so let's do this this is equal to 80 times minus a half of 3 that's the product of the main diagonals minus the product of the off diagonals so 0 0.5 rad 3 times minus 6 cos of 15 degrees and so if you carry all of this out on your calculator you should be able to show that my comes to 281.53 pound feet and just to do the vector of that so and I can say of course vectorially I can say that uh, m y vector is u hat sub y times the magnitude of y that's just definition so this is going to equal minus a half comma a half rad 3 comma 0 times 281.53 and if you do that you should be able to show that m y vector is equal to minus 140.76 comma 243.81 comma zero 
and of course the units here are pound feet and that completes the solution to this problem thanks for watching we will see you in a future video